Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video I thought we'd look at the belt stars of Orion, sometimes known as the Three Kings or Three Sisters as well. Three stars, of course, as you can see here is Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka. Of course, Orion's belt, as it says here, is, is an asterism, it's not a constellation itself. Asterism means that it's a distinctive shape in the sky, but not necessarily a constellation. And as we can see here, the first star on the left is Alnitak. And Alnitak is actually a triple star system, and Alnitak has the designation of Zeta Orionis. Obviously, it's a huge blue supergiant star, as we can see here. That's the AA star. And as we see, that AA star has a huge mass of 33 solar masses and a radius of 20 with a luminosity of 250,000 solar luminosities. And even at a distance of 12,060 light years, or possibly even further than that, Alnitak is still the 31st brightest star in the sky. And as we can see here, it's a uh, it's actually designated as a Southern Celestial Hemisphere star, although I'm sure most of us up here in the north have seen Orion's belt, perhaps in the, in the very far extremes in the Arctic, maybe it's not possible to see, although I'm, I'm not even sure that's true. And as we see, it's, it, the main star is an O-type, and the other two stars, one is a B-type subgiant, and the other is a B-type giant. Interestingly, in the Onitak system, you might have noticed that the AA star has a bit of an odd designation and as we can see in this graphic here it looks like there's two stars doesn't it in orbit but really the the main pairing is actually this one here and it's it's a very close in binary as we can see in, in this picture here that this is the main pairing of AA and AB and then if I sort of move outwards a little bit we can see the B star so as I was saying the reason that the two principal stars aren't A and B and rather AA and AB is because originally when Alan Attack was discovered there was no AA and AB there was just an A and a B so it was easier for the designation to become AA and AB rather than change everything. It also says here a fourth star ninth magnitude Alan Attack C has not been confirmed to be part of the AA AB B group and it may just lie in line of sight that's quite common isn't it that sometimes we don't know because we can't actually tell exactly how far the star is and it also says the brightest star O class star that's the AA star in about a million years will expand into a red supergiant wider than the orbit of Jupiter so Alnitak is certainly one of the largest stars certainly in our part of the galaxy if not indeed the galaxy itself and when it does expand it will certainly become one of the largest stars of all in the galaxy the next star is the one in the middle which also another arabic name isn't it most of these names beginning with al tend to be arabic names and this is al nilam and it's the central star in orion's belt it says here the equatorial constellation of orion i think that seems a bit fairer to me rather than designating it as the southern hemisphere Although I suppose technically it probably is. And Alnilam is Epsilon Orionis. Alnilam is even slightly brighter than Alnitak, as we can see here. That reaches 29th brightest in the night skies. Alnilam is 1180 light years away and is blue type supergiant with the 1A designation. So, unlike Alnitak, Alnilam is actually a single star, at least as far as we know. There doesn't appear to be any spectroscopic binary pairings in the system. A star that's even larger, as we see here, than Alnitak at 40 solar masses and a radius of 30, which leaves a huge luminosity. Look at that, 419,000 solar luminosities. It's quite interesting here. It says that since 1943, the spectrum of the star has served as one of the stable anchor points by which other stars are classified for the spectral class of B01A. So those of you that know these designations, the B0 means that it's, it's one of the hottest possible B-class stars. In fact, if it were any hotter, it would join the O-class. And the 1A looks like an L. I was used to think it was an L, but it's actually a 1A means that it's a supergiant. So Alnilam is certainly a very, very large star, larger indeed than Rigel or, or anything within 1,000 light years of us. It says here also it's at its highest point in the sky around midnight on December 15th. I suppose that makes sense. I don't know where you are in the world, but certainly here in the Northern Hemisphere, Orion is certainly a winter constellation. It certainly shines very brightly in the winter quite curious here that in Chinese the meaning of the three stars refers to an asterism consisting of Alnilam, 
Onitaka Mintaka. But then it also says that Beetlejuice, Bellatrix, Safe and Ridgeal were later added. So actually that's really just talking about the Orion constellation. If you take out the bow and the arrow, you've pretty much got all the stars there. So I, I don't fully know why the Chinese have decided to name the asterism and then include those stars. Quite interestingly here in, in Space Engine, there is actually a procedurally drawn Neptune planet in orbit around Alan Lam, as we can see right in the, in the middle there. And, and if we zoom in, obviously any planet in, in orbit around a star that the power of Alan Lam is, is just gonna be burnt to a crisp, literally. Such powerful stars chances of life forming around them is virtually zero. Let's see if we can calculate a possible habitable zone for Al Nilam, even though it is somewhat moot in the sense that, as we've discussed many times on this channel, the chances of life forming are virtually zero because the stars just don't live very long. Obviously, it says here the age of Al Nilam is 4.47 million years, and I suspect at that age, it's at best middle age, perhaps even towards the end of its lifespan, around 10 million years, I think is the given lifespan for a star of Alnilam's type. Obviously with a star temperature of 26,540, Alnilam is, is almost five times hotter than our sun, which is quite incredible really. And indeed, in fact, this habitable zone calculator doesn't even reach a limit. I think the maximum temperature we can put in here is 20,000. So Alnilam, bear in mind, is even hotter than it says here. And if we put a planet at 100 astronomical units, uh, let's zoom out, that's Alnilam star there in the middle. There's the planet's orbit is actually here as it's lost the circle and it carries on out. So it says here, the inner radius of Alna Lam's habitable zone would begin at 350 astronomical units. And obviously again, because it's actually hotter than that, but I suspect it'd probably be more like 500. So for a star like Alna Lam, anything inside 500, maybe 400 at worst, astronomical units you're talking about, basically what's happening here to this procedurally drawn Neptune, just a fireball really of a planet, lava world. And even if the world is inside this habitable zone, let's say about 450 astronomical units, it's only gonna have 10 million years to form any meaningful genesis of life. So calculating habitable zones of stars like Al Nilam is, as I said, it's a bit of a moot point, really. The last star in the belt is this one on the right, known as Mintaka. Delta Orionis is Mintaka, and Delta Orionis, or Mintaka as it's called, is somewhat dimmer than Al Nilam and Al Attack, and comes in at 67th, brightest in the night sky. It's still quite incredible, really, isn't it? You've got three, the top 67 stars, shall we say, all within very, very few arc seconds in the skies. Indeed, it just adds really to that entire part of the sky where we have the winter triangle and several of the brightest stars. It's quite a curious coincidence, as, as I've mentioned many times before. Just so many of the brightest stars in our skies are in that area. And indeed, it's not even going towards the center of our galaxy, it's going outwards. So I always find that quite curious. Uh, Mintaka is 900 light years away and is an O-type star and two B-type stars. The O-type star has the two designations. So we've moved down from the supergiants now, but it's still a very bright star, a bright giant of the O-type, which of course means that the star is very, very hot indeed. Here we can see the main Mintaka system. And as we can see, it's quite complicated really. So we have a A1, which is the O-type star. That's got a spectroscopic binary or a, a very close in binary with AA2. So again, look at those designations. We can read into that, meaning that the A star, what was originally the A star, has now become three separate stars, hence the strange designations. And then there's, there's a smaller pairing, Mintaka C, which again has become CA and CB. So as, as obviously as telescopy has improved, so the Mintaka system ha has expanded multiple star system, it says some 1200 light years from the sun. So there's a bit of discrepancy there, isn't it? It said 900 in the other table, which is quite normal for these kind of distance stars. We're not fully sure of how far away they are. Mintaka, of course, on Delta Orionis here on the right. Primary component is a triple star system. So there's a bright giant, as we mentioned, there's a class B main sequence star that orbits every 5.37 days. And it, oh, oh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? It orbits in the sense that it actually eclipses the star. So there will be a dimming. I don't know if you've watched the Algol video, the demon star, 
that's a very similar type where the, the actual plane of the orbiting of the star is facing our sun. So obviously when the slightly dimmer star goes in front of the slightly brighter star, it actually means a slight dimming of the pairing. So Mintaka is another one of those type of stars. The outer star of the triple system orbits in a pair once every 5,389 days. So you can see here, this is the main pairing here, the bright giant and the main sequence star. And then you can see the other star, on the right hand side at the bottom there is, is the other star that orbits around 53,000 days away or every once every 147 years. Uh, so it's, it's relatively close into the system in that sense. As it says here, varies between 38 astronomical units and 148. So it's quite an eccentric orbit, but it's, it's not that far away. And certainly would be very bright in each other's skies. Incredibly bright, in fact, given the power of Mintaka. As for the smaller stars, they really are quite small. As we can see here, one is likely a K dwarf with a radius of 0.77 solar radii. Slightly dimmer than Alpha Centauri B, for example, there. Although it's quite hot, actually, isn't it? I'm not sure if that would push it slightly into the G category. Yeah, the K type ends at 5,300 Kelvin. So Mintaka should call it Delta Orionis B because Mintaka is actually technically only the main star. So Delta Orionis B is just in the G type. As we can see, it's like 24 degrees into the G type. So a, a sub sun star, perhaps a bit like Tau Ceti, more than Alpha Centauri B. And, and there's another one which is not even confirmed to be part of the Mintaka system, Delta Orionis system that is a very bright star indeed but can't be confirmed to be part of that system. So there you go. I think we've run slightly over time on this video. The Orion's Belt stars, the three sisters, Aonitak, Aonilam and Mintaka, all three of them fantastically powerful stars. Indeed, two of them binary stars with other B-type companions that are also incredibly powerful. So next time you take a look up at that part of the sky, bear in mind that all three stars are likely over a thousand light years away so much further than Betelgeuse or Ridgeal or indeed Bellatrix and Safe so they are powerhouses and indeed more powerful than those stars so Ryan's Belt is certainly one of the most incredible asterisms we can see in our winter skies up here in the north so take good care of yourselves look after your friends and family as well and I'll see you on the next one